وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول A question asked I have some friends that describe themselves to be from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah but they make dua to other than Allah in order to come closer to him what is your advice to my friends Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulih nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in There's no doubt that we have a really important principle in Islam which is that al asma'u la tughayyir al haqaiq the names that people give to things don't change their reality you can take a bottle of wine remove the label and write grape juice but it will still be just as haram as when it said wine on it that's because names don't change the reality of what we're dealing with so the fact that there are friends of yours who describe themselves as being from ahlu sunnah doesn't make them necessarily from ahlu sunnah because to be from ahlu sunnah you have to be in terms of your belief and your action in accordance with the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam far away from what is introduced later on or what was introduced later on from all the various kinds of innovations so the fact that these uh, friends make dua to other than allah to come close to him how can we advise them to stop this action the first thing is we need to understand that when we're talking about this a person has to listen with an open mind that's what i would ask them for in the beginning there's no point in closing your mind to what i'm going to say and saying that whatever he says i will not listen because that's not the approach of a person whose heart is open to the truth if your heart is open to the truth and you want to know the truth then you have to listen Now it's really important also that a person goes back to the book of Allah and goes back to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let's look at the book of Allah azza wa jalla. And let's look at the statement of Allah azza wa jalla wa anna al-masajid lillahi fala tad'u ma'a Allah ahada. The masajid, the mosques belong to Allah. So do not make dua to anyone except Allah fala tad'u ma'a Allah ahada do not make dua to anyone along with Allah now this word ahada is min al-fadil umu from the general terms that means everything and anything comes into there that doesn't matter whether it is a muslim a wali or a pious person or a non-pious person or a tree or a stone or a star fala tad'u ma'a Allah ahada don't make dua to anyone besides Allah now it might be the person listens to this and says that's fine but i'm not making dua to anyone except Allah i'm making dua to Allah through that person okay what did Allah say about this in the Quran ما نعبدهم الا ليقربونا الى الله زلفا those who took partners والذين اتخذوا those who took من دونه اولياء they took partners instead of Allah ما نعبدهم الا ليقربونا الى الله زلفا ان الله يحكم بينهم ان الله لا يهدي من هو كاذب كفار Allah will certainly judge between them those people who took wali they took a wali that's the word Allah uses not the word I'm using they took a wali instead of Allah they said we only worship that wali to make us near to Allah to bring us closer to Allah in position liqarribuna to make us closer now let me read the wording of the question 
they make dua to other than Allah to come closer to Him. They make dua to other than Allah to come closer to Him. Those who take a wali instead of Allah, we only do so to make us closer to Allah. Completely equal. Allah does not guide the one who is a liar and an extreme dispenser. Kaffar, Allah described him. Kaffar, an extreme dispenser. Because they used to make dua to awliya, to a wali, to make them closer to Allah. That's the words that Allah Azza wa Jal used. In Surah Al-Zumar, at the beginning of Surah Al-Zumar, and indeed, this idea of not making dua to anyone other than Allah, not making dua to the awliya, to the wali, not making dua for seeking shafa'ah, because as Allah has just said about the disbelievers, that they said, Allah. These are only our intercessors with Allah. All of this is exactly the same thing. The same thing that the people of Quraysh used to do before. Those people of Quraysh who were not Muslim, who Allah revealed about them, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ Say, O oh, disbelievers, I don't worship what you worship. Those same people used the same reasoning. They also had people who they considered to be a wali. And they also asked Allah through them to get near to Allah, to get intercession for, in the sight of Allah. That's why they did it. That's what the Quran tells us about them. But Allah didn't accept it from them. And Allah didn't take them away from disbelief or didn't consider this action of theirs to be anything other than disbelief. So having heard that brief explanation, Really, a person needs to stop and think. I'm not saying that that brief explanation is enough for you. Maybe it's not enough for you. Maybe it is the case that you need to look into this in more detail. But you owe it to yourself in the sight of Allah that you look into this in more detail, that you get more answers, that you really go in and you look at what the Quran says, what the Prophet wasallam said. The Prophet وسلم, when he was dying, in the last period of his life, sallallahu alayhi he said, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْيَهُودَ وَالنَّصَارَ اِتَّخَذُوا قُبُورَ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ مَسَاجِدِ He said, may Allah curse the Jews and the Christians. They took the graves of their prophets as places of prayer. SubhanAllah. Look at this. They took the graves of their prophets. The prophets are salihin. They are righteous people. The prophets are near to Allah. The prophets' dua is accepted. Allah has cursed be upon the Jews and the Christians. They took the graves of their prophets as places of prayer. And the ahadith and the ayat are so many on this topic. You owe it to yourself to look into it properly, to study your religion properly, to understand the Quran and the Sunnah properly. And inshallah, if you do that, you will understand the reality of those who make dua to other than Allah in order to get near to Allah. And that this is the same as the people who were disbelievers at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. And I think it's so important that you, you know, at this moment when you're looking into this, you make sincere dua to Allah directly alone. And you ask Allah to guide you to the truth. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rzuqna attiba'a wa arina al-baatila baatila wa rzuqna ijtiba'a Oh Allah shows the truth is the truth and allow us to follow it and show us the falsehood as falsehood and allow us to keep away from it. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention. And Allah Azza wa Jalla knows best. Was salat was salam ala Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, then you can email us at questions at amau.org.